The force of gravity is an attractive force that exists between any two objects with mass. Take these two majestic beasts, for example. Since they both have mass, there will be a gravitational force of attraction between them. More specifically, the cow will exert an attractive force on the duck. And the duck will also exert an attractive force on the cow. They are attracted to each other because they both have mass. Keep in mind that the gravitational force is very, very weak between them, though. The gravitational force becomes more important when dealing with very large masses, like planets and stars. These two forces will be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. This is an example of an action and reaction force pair. We encountered these when learning about Newton's third law. Newton's third law states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. If you would like to revise this, please see our earlier video on Newton's third law of motion. Although this gravitational attraction that exists between all cows and ducks may be a new concept, the concept of gravitational forces is actually one that we have encountered previously in Topic 2, Mechanics. The weight of the cow is given by its mass, m, times the acceleration due to gravity, g. In this case, the cow's weight is actually describing the gravitational force exerted by the Earth on the cow. Although there is a large disparity in mass between the Earth and the cow, Newton's third law still applies as usual. The gravitational force exerted by the Earth on the cow is equal and opposite to the gravitational force of the cow on the Earth. The cow is pulling on the earth with exactly the same amount of force as the earth is pulling on the cow. If we place our protagonist at the same altitude as the International Space Station, the gravitational force it experiences will be less than what it experiences on the surface of the earth. This means that the cow weighs less than it does on the earth's surface, and the acceleration due to gravity is less than 9.81 metres per second squared. We will understand why this is the case as we look at the equation for gravitational force. We can calculate the gravitational force between two objects by using Newton's law of gravitation. Where F is the gravitational force in Newtons, G is the gravitational constant, which is given in the data booklet. Uppercase M is the mass of the heavier object in kilograms. Lowercase M is the mass of the lighter object in kilograms. And R is the distance between the centres of the two objects in metres. Keep in mind that gravity is a force, so it is a vector with a direction. Each object will be pulled towards the other object. Let's take a moment to look at the formal definition of Newton's law of gravitation, which may be asked in an exam. There are two ways to answer this. Firstly, you could write out the equation and identify what each symbol represents. Otherwise, you can rewrite the equation as a proportionality relation by removing the proportionality constant, g. Then rewrite it in words, using fancy physics terminology. The gravitational force between two point masses is proportional to the product of both masses, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the masses. In both situations, you will need to mention that it applies to point masses, as this is a fundamental requirement of the equation. Now let's look at that requirement again. Newton's law of gravitation can be used to calculate the gravitational force between two point masses. 
When we say point masses, we are saying that both objects are so small that they have zero length. This means, strictly speaking, we cannot use this equation to find the gravitational force between a cow and a duck, since they are big and occupy space. However, we can still substitute their masses and the distance between them into the equation to find an answer which is approximately correct. In other words, we can still use this equation if we pretend the mass of the entire object is concentrated at its centre and we measure the distance between the centres of the two objects. Care should be taken when determining what distance r to substitute into the formula. For example, taking r to be the distance between the surface of the bowling ball and the surface of the golf ball would be incorrect. In this scenario, r should be the distance from the centre of the bowling ball to the centre of the golf ball. Looking at these equations, we see that f is proportional to big M and f is also proportional to little m. Therefore, increasing the mass of either object will cause the gravitational force to increase. Doubling either big M or little m will cause f to double. Furthermore, f is inversely proportional to r squared, so increasing the distance between the objects results in decreasing the gravitational force. Doubling r causes f to decrease by a factor of 4. If you would like to revise the concept of proportionality, please see our earlier video on proportionality in HSC physics skills. Finally, a common mistake is forgetting to square the radius r in the denominator when substituting values into a calculator. It is important that you don't forget to square the denominator or you will get the wrong answer. Now let's look at a sample question. Calculate the gravitational force between the Earth and a satellite of mass 100 kilograms orbiting at a distance of 6.47 times 10 to the 6 metres from the centre of the Earth. The Earth's mass is taken to be 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. We also know from the data booklet that the gravitational constant, g, is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. First, we write down the relevant equation. Then write all known variables in SI units. Next, we substitute the values into the equation. When putting this into your calculator, don't forget to square the denominator. Now, we arrive at our unrounded value for the gravitational force, F, in units of newtons. Since the question did not ask us about significant figures, it will be sufficient to round our answer to three significant figures. If we rounded the answer to one or two significant figures, we run the risk of not showing enough precision for the mark scheme. So the final answer is 951 newtons. Therefore, the Earth exerts a gravitational force of 951 newtons on the satellite, and the satellite exerts an equal and opposite gravitational force on the Earth. Let's look at another sample question. A satellite is a distance r from Mars and experiences a gravitational force of 200 newtons. The satellite moves to a new position at a distance 2r from planet X, which is half the mass of Mars. What is the gravitational force on the satellite due to planet X? Now, this is a more difficult question because we don't know the mass of Mars, nor the mass of the satellite. But we can still answer this question using the principles of proportionality. 
Firstly, we write down the equation for gravitational force, since that's what the question is asking about. Then we write down all information given in the question. In the first scenario, the distance is r and the force is 200 newtons. Let's take the mass of Mars to be big M and the mass of the satellite to be little m. Substituting these values into the equation gives the following. In the second scenario, the distance has doubled, the force is unknown, the mass of planet X is half the mass of Mars, and the mass of the satellite remains constant. This gives us the following equation. Next, we simplify the equation on the right so it looks like the equation on the left. Expanding the brackets gives the following which is equal to 1 over 8 times gmm divided by r squared. Finally, we substitute the equation on the left. So the force is 25 newtons, and the correct answer is option A. If you would like to revise this process, please see our video on proportionality calculations in IB Physics Skills. To summarise, the gravitational force is a force between any two objects with mass and can be calculated by the equation F equals G big M little m divided by R squared. This is given in the IB Physics Data Booklet. However, this equation is only accurate for point objects. We can apply this to planets and other objects if we assume that their mass is concentrated at their centre and we use the distance between their centres. The three most commonly asked questions are to define Newton's law of gravitation, simple calculations where you find the values of g, big M, little m and r from the question and data booklet, then plug them into the equation, and proportionality calculations where some of the values are unknown. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons on physics, check out our video on orbital speed and orbital period.